everyone, my name is Nadia and welcome to Cool Common Mom. Today I don't have a lunch video for you but what I do have is a grilled chicken recipe which I hope would be a little bit more helpful to you. I know it's just grilled chicken, I'm not reinventing anything but this is just the way that I make it and it has been working for me for many many years. As a working mom, if I have anything ready in the freezer, I can use it to make lunch or dinner within 10 to 15 minutes and I think that can be helpful for everyone. So I'll show you step by step how I make it, all the ingredients that you need and I'll show you how to freeze it. Um, I think the way I freeze it a little, is a little bit different which can prevent freezer burn. But don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave. I also post daily on Instagram so be sure to check that out. But let's go ahead and jump in the video and I'll see you guys next time. So here are the ingredients that we need for the grilled chicken. To begin with of course we need um, chicken. Uh, the way I get it from the butcher shop is I just ask them to get to give me um, chicken strips or chicken fajita cut. And this is what they do. Basically, they cut it chicken breast in um, thin, stri thin strips so it's easier to cook instead of cutting it later or after the chicken breast is done. I used to cook the whole chicken breast. It used to take a lot longer. This is much easier. It, gets, it, uh, it cooks a lot faster on the grill pan. Okay, and here are the main ingredients as far as the spices. Uh, the first one is Cajun seasoning. I get this one from Sam's. It's a pretty big bottle. Um, this is what gives it the most um, fajita flavor or Cajun flavor. I have used fajita seasoning before, but that has not helped at all. So this uh, this gives a, lot, uh, a much better smoky and spicy flavor. Next one is lemon pepper. This is also from Tones and it is uh, from Sam's as well. A little bit of parsley. Uh, we like our chicken fajita kind of spicy because I use it in other uh, recipes as well or grilled chicken a little spicy um, so this is red chili this is optional I like to add a little bit of this because the Cajun seasoning in my opinion does not have enough spices for our taste okay this is this cheese looking bottle has garlic in it uh, this is garlic paste I make it about once a month with fresh garlic that I get from Sam's um, we use it in every single thing because our food is mostly curry based and um, mostly Southeast Asian food and we use a lot of garlic in pretty much everything. So I use fresh garlic. Then you'll need a little bit of zesty Italian or any Italian dressing. Uh, Italian dressings can also be used as marinade and also some balsamic vinegar. Now with everything you see here, uh, these seasonings, Cajun and lemon pepper has a lot of salt in it. So I don't feel the need of adding extra salt to my recipe. But if you, I mean, you can add salt according to your taste. Let's go ahead and start mixing this. So the first thing I do is I take a big uh, bowl um, and I always like to use uh, steel bowls for any time I'm making any meat. So I'm adding all my spices here. I'm not showing you any measurement because I'm making a big batch, like five to six pounds of uh, chicken breast. But I will leave the measurements and the ingredients for uh, about two pound of chicken recipe in the description box below. That way, if you're not making a big quantity, you have you will have the recipe for two pounds. So here, I mixed everything. Um, and now I'm mixing in the uh, the chicken strips. Um, I am wearing gloves because the spices that I have added, especially the red chili, can burn your hands really, really easily. So that's really the only reason you can mix it in any way you like. Um, one more thing I wanted to mention is that I leave the chicken uh, marinate or I leave the chicken to be marinated overnight. To me that gives it the best flavor but if you don't have, um, if you don't want to leave it overnight then you can leave it at room temperature for about three to four hours and that also helps uh, it marinate really well. And here I'm adding a little bit of oil and then I'll leave it in the refrigerator overnight. So the way I grill it, it's just really simple. I use a big grill pan uh, and I just make it on the stove. The grill pan that you see here is Galphalon. I have had it for years and it has worked really well. I would leave the link below. But you can use any method of grilling that you like. You can use any grill machine that you have or uh, you can make it on griddle, whatever you prefer. Uh, to me, this grilling it this way or on stove on a grill pan is what gives it the best uh, smoky and grill flavor without turning on the big grill machine. And I used to have an indoor grill machine, uh, but to me it never really gave me a good grill 
uh, in smoky flavor. Uh, once it broke, I never bought another one, and since then I've been using the grill pan. Um, again, as you can see, it's making a lot of mess, but to me it's worth it. Uh, I make this about once a month or every three to four weeks uh, when I know that I'm, I'm about to run out of this, and I use it for many different recipes. I use it in my lunch videos all the time. I use it for dinners, easy dinners. Um, again, once the chicken is already in the freezer, it's really easy to throw it in anything you want and have it have the dinner ready in a few minutes. So here I'm turning the chicken. I make sure to cook it about uh, one to two minutes on each side on high heat. And then when it's brown and it gets the grill marks, then I go ahead and uh, turn it down to medium heat. Now I do make it on high heat, but uh, the key here is to not to overcook these uh, chicken strips because these are so thin. You have to keep a close eye and make sure that you don't overcook them. That way they can stay good in the freezer as well. Now here, um, make sure the chicken is uh, uh, cooled down all the way and then we will start packing it for the freezer. Now all you need for the freezer is a glad press and seal wrap and then you'll need a big ziploc to store everything in and just a pair of scissors to make portion size out of the glad press and seal wraps. Alright, let's go ahead and get packing. Alright, here I'm just showing you um, how to wrap, wrap the chicken. Really not a rocket science but this is how I do it. So I'll show you that in detail. Uh, so I'm taking glad press and seal wrap. Like I mentioned, I'm taking the sticky side. The sticky side of the wrap is up. So I'll make portion sizes. That way I can just take out one or two or three portions, however many we need for the night or for the lunch, whatever we are, you know, whatever I'm using it for. Once I have it divided into individual portion sizes, like you see here, I'll go ahead and pick up the other side of press and seal wrap and then press on to um, this side. I'll make sure that the edges are sealed and that way I wrap it. So basically I wrap it all the way around. I um, make sure the edges are sealed and also the distance that we created between them is also pressed in uh, really firmly. That way it can create individual portions. That's really the main idea behind packing it this way. Now once it's all uh, packed packed or pressed in individually, I'll go ahead and start cutting it so that it can be uh, separated into individual pieces or individual portion sizes. Now I've been freezing chicken this way for a long time um, I, and I know it's not airtight uh, packing or sealing but uh, packing it this way has helped me to keep the chicken flavor and taste uh, last much longer in the freezer. I have had chicken, uh, frozen chicken uh, for up to two months old and when I defrost it, of course you have to defrost it outside or take it out of the uh, press and seal wrap and then uh, defrost it in a microwave safe bowl. Every time we have used it out of the freezer and warmed it up properly, it has not, uh, I have not felt any difference in flavor. Uh, it's the same juicy and smoky and grilled flavor as if you have made it the same day. Now once I make it, I make it just enough for about three to four weeks. Like I mentioned, I make it once a month and then I use it for many different recipes. You can use it on your, your pizza, you can use it in lasagna, you can use it in chicken fajita, chicken enchiladas. I use it in pasta as well. Uh, I use it in any quick soups that I'm making. I, we like to use it for our salads. I know some people like to have some kind of meat or chicken and, and eggs in the morning. You can use it however you like, but the convenience of having it ready in the freezer has been really, really working well for me. Alright, that's all I had for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you will try the recipe. If you do, please let me know in the comments below and let me know how it turned out. This was my first recipe, so if the camera angles were a little off, then I do apologize for that. Don't forget to like and subscribe and please share if you can. And I'll see you guys next time.